Hi guys. So today we are going to learn on subtopic 10.2 circulatory system of humans. I hope you are ready with your pen and paper to take notes. Okay, let's look at the learning standard. Okay. From this lesson, you must be able to describe the components of the human circulatory system, including the heart, blood vessel, and the blood. And then you must be able to explain the composition of blood in blood plasma and also blood cells. And then you must be able to compare and contrast the types of blood vessel, the artery, the vein, and capillary, which you have learned in your form 3. Okay. And then you must be able to label the structure of a human heart and its associated blood vessels. Huh? For example, aorta, vena cava, pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, coronary artery in the vein, semilunar valve, bicuspid valve, tricuspid valve, and also the septum. And lastly, you must be able to describe the function of parts of the heart. Alright? Okay, the circulatory system in humans function to transport essential substances to the body cells and also transport waste products from the cells to be eliminated. Okay, so there are three components of the human circulatory system. Okay, here you can see we have the heart, okay, the blood vessel and also the blood. Now, the heart uh, is important to pump blood which carries vital materials required by the body and also the base products that needs to be excreted out from the body. The blood vessels, however, transport the blood from the system to the body cells. And the blood flows in the blood vessels that function to carry substances that are needed to be transported. Right? Okay, fun fact. Blood is only 8% of the human body and we have about 4 to 6 liters of blood on average. Yeah. So let's look what is in our blood. Now, the human blood consists of 55% of plasma and 45% of cell components or we say the form elements. They can be separated by centrifuging a sample in a centrifugal machine. So this is how a centrifuge machine look like and they can separate the blood according to its density. So the heavier one will sink with the bottom and the lighter one will just float above. Alright, the whole blood refers to the blood obtained from human that consists of all its components. Now the com component of the blood consists of red blood cells, white blood cells and black cells. Right. Function of the blood. What is the function of the blood? Blood transport oxygen and carbon dioxide, uh, nutrients, hormones, antibodies, waste products. It regulates the pH of the body fluids, uh, regulate pH of uh, body temperature and also the water content of the cells. And it protects from excessive blood loss from injury through the mechanism of blood clotting, which helps to heal wounds from diseases and also to fight infections so you can see what is the component all right we have the plasma and the form elements okay so blood plasma is a light yellow color liquid as you can see in the picture all right consists of 90% of water and 10% of dissolved substances and it is the main transport medium in the body all right so as you know 90% is water so what about the dissolved substances? So these are the dissolved substances that we have in the plasma, such as plasma proteins, uh, dissolved gases, digestive products, which are the nutrients, then the excretory substances, hormones, and minerals. Now we know 90% is water, so it's important as solvent for substances and also medium of transport action. Plasma protein is such as uh, albumin is required to keep the viscosity and also osmotic equilibrium in of blood. The antibodies such as globulin is for immunization and the blood clotting factors such as fibrinogen and prothrombin are involved in blood clotting. The dissolved gases such as uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide which are important to exchange in the lungs and also body cells. All right, the digested product and the excretory substances are transported and excreted through the circulatory system. Hormones are transported from the endocrine glands into the targeted organs in water-soluble form. And the mineral ions such as sodium, potassium, calcium, sulfate, and so on. So they are the ones that are transported through the blood. Okay. Okay, let's look. Okay, let's look at the red blood cells. 
Now, uh, the rib process of biconcave in shape for the large surface total surface area per volume ratio for gases exchange. It has no nucleus, but it has a red pigment which is called the hemoglobin that gives the blood its red color. All right, and the hemoglobin consists of a heme group with iron atom, which is the binding site for the oxygen. All right, there are four binding sites. That means one red blood cells can carry four oxygen. Okay, so oxygen, uh, the oxygen combines with the hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin, and then the oxygen is released into the body cells. Now, the red blood cells are developed in the bone marrow of the long bones, uh, ribs, skulls, and also the vertebrae. And it is circulated for about 120 days. Then, after that, it is destroyed in the liver and also the spleen. Okay? Now, let's talk about blood color. Although the veins uh, appear to be blue through skin, but blood is not blue. Okay, the reason why veins might seem to be blue may have to do with the level of oxygen in the blood. So, blood in the human body is red, regardless of how oxygen rich it is. But the shades of red may vary. Okay. Okay, so um, we have now the leukocytes, alright, they are colorless and they have nuclei and mitochondria. They are irregular in shapes and they are larger than the red blood cells. They are also made up of uh, stem cells in the bone marrow and lifespan is like some live for months and some for a few days. So leukocyte can diffuse out of the capillary pore and fight pathogens in tissue fluids. So it's divided into two types. We have the granulocyte and the agranulocyte. Agranulocyte means there's no granule. Now the granulocytes include basophil, eosinophil, and neutrophils. I like to call them benfil. Yeah, B E N, basophil, isono, and neutrophil is their last word. Alright, A granulocytes includes monocyte and lymphocytes. LM site, or you want to call it as ML site. Yeah, it's totally up to you. Alright, now next is let's look at the function of each uh, leukocytes. Now, the basophil has the lowest number in the blood and it contains heparin that prevents blood clotting. Eosinophil, they have nucleus made up of two lobes. As you can see in the picture, we have about, yeah, let me draw it for you, two lobes here, all right? And it releases enzymes that fight inflammation and also allergy reaction. The neutrophils are made up of two to five lobes of in the nucleus, all right? And it ingests bacterial cells and dead cells or tissues from wounds by phagocytosis. You know phagocytosis. You have learned phagocytosis in chapter two, all right? Monocytes is the biggest leukocytes, okay? It has spherical shaped nucleus and it ingests bacteria and dead cell or tissues by phagocytosis. Alright, and lymphocytes contains a large nucleus with very little cytoplasm. Okay, it produces antibodies to destroy bacteria and viruses that enters the body. Yeah, lymphocyte fights viruses. <sighs> All right. It can also produce uh, antitoxin against toxin that are produced by bacteria or also virus, but definitely not all the virus. So, COVID-19. <sighs> all right, now uh, let's look at platelets. Platelets are just fragments of the large cells from the bone marrow. They have no nucleus, but they play a very important role in blood clotting. Okay, and its lifespan is about less than a week okay all right now let's look into the human blood vessel now there are three types of uh, blood vessel which are the artery the vein and the capillary the artery transport oxygenated blood away from the heart and branches into smaller blood vessel called the arteries okay we have the arterioles here all right and uh, the arterioles transport the blood into the tiny blood capillary network that becomes the site of gases and nutrients exchange. All right, between the blood and also the body cells. Now the blood capillaries then will combine to form a small blood vessel that is called now the venue. Uh, wrong place drawing. Let me draw it for you again. Okay. Okay, venue. All right. 
Now the venule transports deoxygenated blood to the vein, all right, uh, which then returns the blood to the heart. So we have the again blood vessel. We have the artery. All right, this is the capillary, and this is the vein. Now let's look deeper into it. Alright, so let's look at the structure of each blood vessel. Now, the artery first. So let's look at artery. Alright, arteries carry oxygenated blood except pulmonary artery. Remember, all arteries carry oxygenated blood except pulmonary artery. Okay, and they are flowing always in high pressure. Yeah, quite stressful. Huh? So arteries have thick walls with three main layers. We have the endothelium layer show you we have the endothelium all right the middle layer which is consists of the smooth muscles and also the elastic tissues and then we have the fibrous connective tissue layer which links to the artery the artery to the tissues nearby this is the connective tissue okay which links the artery to the tissue nearby so artery can transfer blood under high pressure out from the heart because of the strength of the elastic tissue in the middle layer of its wall. Now, arteries do not have valves except semilunar valve at the base of the pulmonary artery. Alright, arteries can reduce the blood flow by contracting the smooth muscle in the middle layer of its wall to constrict the lumen. Now, blood flow can be increased when the artery relaxes its smooth muscles to dilate its lumen. Alright, so now the arteriole is a thin wall branch of the artery and it functions to carry oxygenated blood from the artery to the capillaries. Arteriole carry blood from artery to the capillaries. Now let's look into the capillaries. All right. All right. So capillaries are capillaries are blood vessels that carry blood from the arteriole to the venule, the intermediate point. Okay. So now it has a lumen with a, which is about um, 7 to 9 micrometer, yeah, very small. And these blood vessels uh, form a capillary of network in the organs and blood tissue. Capillaries are the place for exchange of substances and also respiratory gases between the blood and the tissue fluids. All right? And the venule is a small vein that carries the deoxygenated blood from the capillaries to the vein. All right? Now, uh, let's look into the veins. So the veins carries deoxygenated blood except pulmonary vein. Yeah, just now artery, all artery carries oxygenated blood except pulmonary artery. Now all vein carries deoxygenated blood except pulmonary vein at very low pressure and it flows back slowly to the heart. Alright, veins have a larger lumen size than the artery and they are also have uh, they also have semilunar valve on the lumen of the vein to actually prevent the blood from flowing back downwards. Right, because you see blood has to be carried upwards to the heart. Now the veins push the blood in the lumen towards the heart with the help of the contraction and also the relaxation of mechanism, uh, mechanism of the skeletal muscle. All right, the portal vein connects the capillary network to another. For example, um, from the digestion, digestion topic from my previous video, you have learned about the hepatic portal vein, correct? Where it connects the capillary network of the intestine to the capillary network of the liver. So that's how it works. Okay, so now um, your exercise is to draw this table so that you can actually see the differences between the artery, the capillaries and also the vein. So you can pause this video to copy it down or you can do it by yourself and then check your answers so that you know what's the differences. Okay, now let's look into the human heart structure and function. Now, do you know that your heart is as big as your fist? Yeah, it's only this much. Put it on your left hand. So, okay. Now, the heart is located in between the lungs and also the thorax cavity. Now, the heart is made of cardiac muscles, connective tissue and also blood vessel. Alright. Now, cardiac muscle that form the main tissue of the heart wall consists of fibrous muscle that are connected to each other to form a network. 
the cells of cardiac muscles are connected through intergalactic disc. You can look at the picture here. There is this intergalactic disc, okay? Alright, intergalactic disc. Alright, which allow faster transmission of impulses from cell to cell. The cardiac muscles are myogenic whereby it can contract and relax rhythmically without depending on the simulation of by the nerve impulses. Alright, coronary circulation is the circulation of blood in the blood vessel okay, that, supply, that supplies to the heart muscles. Now, the left and right coronary arteries transport oxygenated blood from aorta to the whole heart. Not body, whole heart. Alright, and the coronary veins transport deoxygenated blood from the heart to the right atrium. Okay, so these are the coronary, coronary arteries and these are the coronary veins. So coronary arteries are always in the heart, around the heart. Okay, so the heart, let's look at the human heart structure and function. Now, the heart is divided into four muscular chambers, which are the two upper chambers, which are called the left and the right atrium, and the two bottom ones are called the left and the right ventricle. Alright, so this is, the, this is the right side, and this is the left side. Now, the right atrium receives the deoxygenated blood from the vena cava while the left atrium receives oxygenated blood from the pulmonary veins. All right? And the septum in the middle of the heart is important to separate the right side and also the left side of the heart. So it actually prevents mixing of oxygenated blood on the left side and deoxygenated blood on the right side of the heart. All right? So remember, uh, right side is for deoxygenated blood and left side is for oxygenated blood. Alright, now, um, what else? Okay, the left atrium is separated from the left ventricle by a bicuspid valve which function to prevent the blood flow from the left ventricle into the left atrium. Look at the picture, we have the bicuspid valve. Alright, the right atrium okay, is separated from the right ventricle by a tricuspid valve. Okay, we have the I could speed up. I would like to remember it as 32. 3 and 2. So 3 is for tricuspid and 2 is for bicuspid. Alright. So this also, the tricuspid valve, prevents backflow of blood from the right ventricle into the right atrium, the right side. Okay. The semilunar valve is located at the exit. Okay which are at the base of the pulmonary artery and also aorta. So let's look at the semilunar valve. There is a semilunar valve yeah, here. So here are the semilunar valve. Okay, and this is also semilunar valve. Alright, now um, the semilunar valve okay, uh, also prevents the backflow of the blood uh, from the ventricle. So backflow of the blood into the ventricle, sorry. Okay, when the ventricle relax. Now, the ventricle wall is thicker than the atrium wall. Why? Yeah, because the ventricle needs to pump blood to other parts of the body at a higher pressure, while atria only need to pump blood from the atrium and also into the ventricle, which is just under them. Alright? Now, the left ventricle wall is thicker and more muscular than the right ventricle wall. Why? Yeah, because the left ventricle needs to pump blood through the aorta and to the whole body while the right ventricle only pumps blood to the lungs. So, the left side is doing more work. Okay, now let's look at the blood flow. Now, deoxygenated blood from the rest of the body enters the right atrium okay, via vena cava. Alright, and oxygenated blood from the lungs enters the left atrium through the, pul through the pulmonary vein. Okay. From the lung, the deoxygenated, uh, sorry, the oxygenated blood enters uh, through the pulmonary vein. Now, as the blood fills the atria, the atria will contract and push the blood through the bicuspid and tricuspid valve into the two ventricles. 
okay now we have here just now was oxygen oxygenated blood enters through pulmonary vein and the deoxygenated blood I, I put it deoxygenated DO2 uh, uh, that enters through the vena cava into the atrium and then it will be pushed into the ventricle through the valve okay bicuspid and tricuspid valve now when the ventricles contract the semi lunar valves are forced open all right and now the blood is pushed from the ventricle okay through into the pulmonary arteries and also the aorta okay now the deoxygenated blood is pumped through the pulmonary artery into the lung you see pulmonary artery which carries deoxygenated blood okay and then the oxygenated blood is pumped through the aorta and then to the rest of the body okay okay so we are done so you have learned the composition of blood the human blood vessels the three blood vessels the differences and you have also learned the structure and function of the heart all right so once we are done with all that you understand the topic you have to do formative practice 10.2 as usual answer all the question okay to test your understanding it's from page 179 of your textbook now the questions are such as uh, what is the function of bicuspid valve yeah, all valve have the same function but it's either from where to where yeah? and then explain why some individuals feel nauseous and faint immediately after donating blood and why do some blood donors need to take iron pills talk about iron just now think about it state the two difference between the structures of erythrocyte and also leukocyte the red blood cells and also the white blood cells the differences shouldn't be a problem and explain why the left ventricle has a thicker muscular wall than the right ventricle also explained in the video it shouldn't be a problem okay so please go and do the questions and with that i will end my video here thank you for watching and please do not forget to like and subscribe my channel bye bye <laughs>